holds like 5,000 uh, uh, people in a high school gym and it was packed. I mean, it, it wasn't a seat uh, that was open. I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. It was. Okay, Doug's. I've got to, uh, we got to go back to the, to the old school. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's going to be painless. <laughs> How did you guys get involved in the game of basketball? Okay. We're going to take you back to your, your grade school years. Who put the ball in your court and made you love the game of basketball that took you guys on this incredible journey? How did this start for you? I'm talking about grade school. I'm talking about bitty ball coaches. I'm talking about the influence of maybe your parents. So go right ahead. Go ahead. I'll let the go, Doug, you go first. Uh, go, you go first. All right. Okay. Um, well, I mean, everybody knows I came out of Washington, Illinois, probably. I was uh, uh, raised in a large family, so youngest of, of eight kids, youngest of six boys. Uh, one of my brothers, who eventually passed away, uh, was actually the best athlete in our family. He could he could dunk at 5'9", and uh, just incredible, incredible athlete. But he had uh, some liver issues when he was in high school and had to quit playing basketball, which was always his dream. And um, he was quite a few years older than me, but he would just take me, he would take me places all the time. And all my brothers would challenge me. I mean, I, I shed a lot of tears. I, I just remember playing, uh, I was probably a better baseball player at the start of my high school career than basketball, but, you know, just playing all sports and just growing up. And they just always took us places. Uh, my brother, Bill would actually, my first experiences, at, you know, his younger age, uh, he would take us over into Peoria actually. And, and we'd go to parks and stuff and, and play when we were little and, and uh, just go out there and get our butt kicked, you know, and he wouldn't so much, but I would, and, you know, almost say I didn't want to go back, but it was that just that competition all the time. And I think coming from, you know, coming from Washington, uh, I, I always felt like, you know, we had such great teams ahead of us, really. Randy Holzhauer is a great player. I always watched, you know, I can go back and forth. So, so many great players within the whole Peoria area. But, you know, I mean, I always kind of looked to Peoria to try to, to be competitive, you know, because you kind of, you had so many great players. And, and I think that it was a great experience. I know Derek Funk, as we got older, uh, I'm sure Derek's watching, as you said earlier, but, you know, there would be four or five of us uh, kind of moving forward. You know, we played on all these bitty basketball teams, but it was more, more so than today, it was like, uh, you had fun, you know, you really did. You, today, it seems so many club teams, nothing against club teams, I guess we'd go about that for, for days. But the reality is it was just uh, the competition all the time. You know, when you grow up, the youngest of eight, um, as my dad always said, you know, you, you, you got to fight to get a piece of chicken. And the reality was, is that it was just competitive. I mean, uh, always competitive. And that, that was great. That was great to grow up in a family where you had brothers who were athletic and, um, just, just pushed you. And then you start to recognize that you have, you know, maybe been definitely blessed with more God given ability to do certain things. And as you find that out, you know, you, you grow into your body, things happen. You know, I remember, I think uh, I was five foot eight, five foot nine as a freshman and six foot three as a sophomore, you know? And so, um, you know, it's just from the start of my freshman year and I was 17 in college. So I was young. And it was always just getting pushed into bigger games. And that, that's the thing I always tell kids. They, they talk about what's it take to get better. And I always say, go play against the best. And so, you know, we would end up in the gyms, Emmanuel, Central, you know, McLean and, and so forth. And just, just go over and play ball. And you know, we had, you know, guys that would come from Peoria back over to Washington. And it was, that was probably, I don't know, the pickup games for me during that time was probably some of the most, uh, most memorable things that I, that I recall you know, going out to Carver, different areas, and just just playing ball. And again, you go over there. Then pretty soon, I think one of the one of the big advantages was, you know, um, I think it was really important as going over and playing against because we didn't we didn't grow up. I mean, we didn't grow up with uh, a ton of uh, African American families that are in our in our community. But yet, my dad taught us from a young age to respect everybody, and he would always take us over there. And and then my brothers, and then as we got older playing, it's like it took the factor to realize, hey, we're all the same. God made us all the same. And and yet I think it helped us in a way to just be comfortable with who our friends were. Boo, I mean, all of us go back, right? I mean, it's so, I mean, I can look back and 
everybody. I can go through so many guys, you know, uh, David Booth and I go and play in the summers and different things that, you know, Tony Weising, I can go on and on. I, I'm going to miss so many people. Uh, but every one of them were important to, to, to my, you know, just developing as a player. And I think, you know, I was so fortunate to have community around too. I mean, Washington is a tight community and, uh, you know, proud of me. I stay, still uh, stay in touch with the mayor and, you know, a lot of people there, it's family there. Uh, I talked to Kirk Johnson's with Uptring just, just yesterday, you know, a lot of people that, that uh, I grew up around that just really supported me. I mean, it, it was incredible, but I felt like after and kind of moving forward here, this would be, you know, hours. Um, I really felt the support of Peoria uh, on top of Washington when I, when I played in college, Doug, I, I bet you feel the same way. I mean, it was a part where, you know, it was proud to say, yeah, I was from Washington, but yeah, people, where's that? And I'm like close to Peoria. Oh, Peoria, you know, man, they great players. And, and it was always the thrill to say that you're a part of that kind of legacy and, and dynasty of players during that time. And, so many great players that went to division one college division two II, division three i mean we had just so many college players that um it was a very very special time i think um thanks doug i think for me um you know i when i first started playing basketball at tj for example uh, my dad had played at illinois and um so you know everybody my dad's named bill and my brother's named bill so you know everybody would call me bill so when i was Growing up, I, um, I I liked the game of basketball, but I sort of fell in love with it because my dad would take me to the state tournament at a very young age, and I would go to the games um, with my brother, who's uh, a number of years older than me, and uh, his job was to, to babysit me. But I remember going to the um, assembly hall and as, as state high in the state tournament, and I thought, man, this is this is really cool. And then I, I fell in love with the game. My dad took me down to the Checker Dome in St. Louis. And there was a guy that uh, played for UCLA who uh, I idolized in college. I mean, and, and when I was growing up was Bill Walton. And I didn't know he was a sort of a crazy dude, but at the time of the basketball, to me, he uh, was everything that I wanted to be a basketball player. He passed, he defended, he ran, the, he did everything. So I, I, I loved watching him play basketball. And that's, that's what I just said, hey, you know what? I, I wanna be like, you know, a, a great player like him. And so I, um, you know, as Doug said, sort of knew at a young age that I had some gifts and, um, you know, I, it, uh, things just came to me naturally. And then as I, I was very fortunate cause I, I lived, uh, you know, uh, and I was going to go to Central, believe it or not, and, and Peoria Central was my brother went to Peoria Central, then my dad and mom moved across town, and, and I was going to go to Peoria Richwoods, which, boo, you know, Central Richwoods, that like, you know, that's like uh, crazy, so I didn't, I didn't want to go play for Peoria Richwoods, but the, I went to Keller High School, and, and there was, uh, an, uh, I was in sixth grade, and then in eighth grade, they had this uh, very athletic already you know guys terry cole who played football mike o'brien who played uh vince simpson all these guys ended up being great basketball players were the heavyweight team and then you had a lightweight team so i got to know these guys which was ironic when i got to high school um my uh, sophomore year they were all seniors and they, they were just in a gifted class and so they did really well in state so I was sort of fortunate because they were so good and I was just a, you know, sort of a clueless sophomore. And I got to be a little bit, um, it was a big, just a huge factor for me. I mean, he really uh, made me a, a better player. He challenged me every day. Um, and I just, at that point, everything just sort of focused. So I, I just, high school is when I really, felt like, you know what, this is, this is, and then I, I was fortunate because we went downstate, all of a sudden I started getting all these letters for college. And I thought, wow, I mean, I didn't really play very well, but for some reason they think I'm, you know, I can play at the next level. So that really motivated me to, to, to work hard and, and get in play in college and stuff like that. But it, my dad playing in Illinois, you know, he, um, you know, he, um, 
it was just, you know, so instrumental for me because my dad, you know, helped me with my game. You know, he taught me a lot. You know, he would sit down and tell me, you know, how to be a better player. So he was very, very helpful as well. And, uh, you know, I look back and, you know, like Doug said, I was very blessed. I mean, Peoria is a great community, had great basketball. You know, we would play in the summers at Richwoods High School. You know, we had Mark Smith, Derek Holcomb. We had Bradley guys come over. I mean, it was just crazy. Doug Lee would come over. I mean, we had guys that would play, pick up games. I mean, it was, it was insane how much talent was out there. I look back now, that was just in Peoria. The guys, not even just Division One, but he had Division Two, and I mean, three, and, and those guys could play just as much as we could. So at, at, uh, in the summers, it was just amazing basketball. So it was – that was sort of the golden years, I think I would say for Peoria. I mean, I'm sure they were great, you know, Calvert Chaney and all these other guys came in, you know, um, and, and some of the other great current players. But my, my point is that a lot of guys from Indiana came over there and, uh, you know, recruited, you know, Purdue got Doug and, you know, Illinois, we recruited, I mean, it was a fertile recruiting and it was just amazing uh, to be a part of that with Peoria and just the type of basketball was being played. Uh, you know, it was just, uh, as Doug said, you would go and people say you're from Peoria area. And it was like, wow, instantly they knew that, uh, you know, you, the, the, there was this great basketball there. And I, I look back and who you mentioned too, uh, Paul Rutherford, you know, he was, he ran this little uh, uh, bitty basketball, youth basketball. And, uh, he, he ran it with an iron fist, but he, he was really a, a, a sort of a, a, a cool guy that really helped funnel young players uh, and channel them into being better basketball players, especially for high school and stuff like that. So we, there was a lot of play, a lot of people that supported Peoria basketball. I was, Boo, I was going to, I was going to add something that, you know, one thing you mentioned Doug had talked about is that there were so many great coaches. I mean, uh, Steve Doty knows our high school coach. I love him. Matter of fact, I had his birthday yesterday. So happy birthday, coach. Um, but the fundamentals were something that were taught everywhere we went. You know, I could remember going, whether it was, uh, you know, Bisher, Westendorf, didn't, you know, you go through and I remember going over to play and, and have uh, basically McLean, you know, stop games <laughs> and go, you know, you didn't do this fundamentally. And get out of the gym you know it, it was pretty common in those days to kick players out of the gym right uh both at our place i mean coach doty kicked me out a couple times so you know I, I think it's a part where you know fundamentals were fundamentals and, and you worked on that i still believe in that today i still believe the the great great players can do the fundamentals and you know back when we played if you couldn't you know uh triple threat couldn't do the right things and just being taught that at a young age you know, I never went to all these camps and everything to go to. I was invited to Nike camps, all these things. I never did. That's, I think, when Nike camps got started. But, you know, I'd go to Coach Doty's camp and, uh, you know, I was a lifer there. But he taught me the fundamentals all the time of how to play the game fundamentally. And when I got in college, quite frankly, when I went to Texas A&M first um, and, and still love that school, it was uh, – it was a shock how far ahead I was fundamentally than the players there, you know, and, and I, I really, you know, people, contrary to what people think, you know, that I didn't like Texas A&M, I did. I just, I wanted to get back to Midwest basketball. I was starting there and playing and, you know, on my way to a great career there. But the reality was I just, after I got hurt there my sophomore year, I wanted to get back to Midwest basketball and the fundamentals and uh, get back in the same conference with Doug. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's a good point. Uh, yeah, and, and the other point is, is that there were a lot of great coaches um, in, in, in our league, um, and and you know it, that. I, and I look back at uh, um, you know all you know uh, Chuck Busher, who was a great coach at Central. Um, you know, defensively, I don't think there was anybody better than him. I mean, I, when you played Peoria Central, you knew that you were in for a battle. Uh, defensively and uh, it was going to be a low scoring game but you had to be mentally and physically tough um, when you played uh, at Peoria Emanuel um, you know coach Van Syke was was uh, another a discipline of the spread offense so they spread you out and you know he he attacked you in a different way and and they, he always had good athletes and Peoria Emanuel was always um you know, right there. And, and as Boo and you and I were talking earlier in the week, I had forgotten that they came out of our 
regional or, or sectional and, uh, and went on to go downstate. That just tells you the depth of, of our league that we had. So the, the, the league was, uh, we didn't travel a lot because you know the way that we had so many teams, so we didn't go up to mm -hmm. Central. I mean, I'd go up to Chicago or go down to St. Louis. So we didn't always maybe get the exposure, but as Doug said, the coaching and the fundamentals and and thing and and the way the the guys also the coaches you know they didn't recruit, but they knew how to identify guys that could play uh, and and contribute and, and play at a different level. So they weren't like I remember playing one time. We, were, we my freshman year is a funny story. We were playing uh, Peoria Spalding, and. Uh, you know, we got by, beat by like, I don't know, 20 points my freshman year. And I'm like, my gosh, they're going to be really, really good senior year. And, and the, the freshman coach, uh, Coach Isley, laughed. He said, Doug, uh, those guys have maxed out. They're as good as they're ever going to be. And you'll be, you'll be fine by your junior year. You'll, you'll be, you know. yeah. And so I, I, I laughed at that. But that goes back to coaching, you know, looking at maybe a young Doug Lee who's freshman year, who's, you know, five foot nine but you know, knows that he maybe has his growth spurt, he's got uh, the skills and we can teach him the defense. Um, that you don't see a lot in high school anymore. Uh, I get frustrated having three kids go through um, you know, high school uh, sports and identifying someone that maybe hasn't hit their, their full uh, stride yet, their freshman, <clears throat> maybe sophomore year, uh, the coaches evaluating talent, um, especially sometimes um, and, you know, they, they, they struggle with that. But my point is, is that uh, our, our conference was as good as any, in the, uh, if not the state in the country. It was, it was a very competitive, uh, and you had, to, you had to bring your game every night uh, in that league. Yeah, I agree. Uh, to piggyback on what you said, Doug, uh, in 1980, your sophomore, our sophomore year, uh, I believe you guys, uh, the varsity at Richwoods, because you, you moved on up, only lost one uh, regular season game and won the conference, went undefeated in the conference, but a team that was fourth in the conference ended up just steamrolling everybody in class A and that was Bergen. Oh, that's right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so we had two teams from the conference that were uh, in the elite eight in, um, you know, down in Champaign. And unfortunately, you know, I was a sophomore at the time, uh, we lost. Um, I wasn't on the team. I was on the sophomore team. You guys lost in uh, Champaign uh, in the Elite Eight, and then Bergen went all the way to the title against a very, very tough Chicago Luther South team. But Bergen had the great Tom Gillis and Scott McCabe, and they were formidable. They were the small school in our conference in the Mid-State 10, and um, I just remember how every night – you had to be on your A game, no matter who it was. Uh, even uh, East Peoria that has been down in the last couple of years, they were formidable. Limestone was formidable. Pekin was no day at the beach going over and playing in that big gym with that raucous crowd. And Spalding, Spalding became tough with Kenny Drummond. Kenny Drummond <laughs> made them very difficult. Of course, Manuel, like you said. And uh, who am I leaving out in the conference? Uh, Woodruff. The Jackson boys, they were tough. So <laughs> every night it was a dogfight, without a doubt. Yeah, I broke my nose my sophomore year at, at Bergen. That uh, I think uh, uh, it was the first time I broke it, and a few a few more times after that. But I remember, yeah, Bergen was uh, uh, they were they were they were very talented. And I forget, who was the coach back then? He was um, Rudy Keeling. Yeah, yeah, Rudy. Rudy, yeah, Rudy. I forgot about Rudy. Yeah. Rest in yep. rest in peace. Yes, Rudy unfortunately uh, passed away a couple of years yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, Rudy was awesome. I think you know too. One of the things, guys, I think that you know, it's trying to explain to the younger generation, you know, because people talk about it. And you, you always hate to go back and say, "Hey, we were the greatest during that time." That I think the experience was so special, though, because I can remember, you know, even my junior year in high school. Uh, Washington, I mean, you would see people, you know, standing room only, and you'd see people coming in just to watch us warm up and going over to other gyms. I remember going over and playing at Manual and, you know, fans trying to even get a seat uh, to get in there, you know, to be able to, to play. And I think that's what made it really special too. You knew everywhere you went, you were in a dogfight. You went into Bergen, and, you know, 
I remember going to Bergen, and I, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the games we lost. I know Derek would know that for sure, but uh, uh, I just remember, you know, going in and thinking, hey, we, we got this, you know, and you get a little big headed and, and so forth. And it didn't matter who it was. And Pekin, you know, that big gym, I remember my sophomore year, we won the Pekin Holiday Tournament. And, you know, uh, it was one of my greatest memories being, you know, uh, named to the, to the uh, all tournament team, you know, as a sophomore, because I just started, that was my first start as a sophomore at that tournament. And so for me, just that whole overall experience to go into everybody's gyms and, and really be friends. I mean, the guys you'd walk out and play against, you would joke about and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to kick your butt tonight. You may not have said it that nice every time, but, but the reality was, um, it was good. It was just, it was competitive every single night, you know, and, and that was just what I wish for the younger players today. Uh, you know, I go back and I see good fans and these type of things, but we're talking pack gems, you know, just people trying to get in. And that, that was a really a great memory. Well, I think too, you know, I'm going to call you Lee and I'm going to call you Augie. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, Lee, uh, name some of the great players, some of your great teammates that you had uh, during your career at Washington. And I'll ask you the same, Augie, uh, when does. Well, I mean, there's so many guys. I think, you know, Derek Funk, I think was probably, I think he was named second team all conference that year, but I always felt like Derek was probably, uh, and I know a lot of players have said this to me from Peoria over the years, Derek was probably the most underrated player in the whole conference, in my opinion. I mean, he, uh, you know, he focused on, you know, none of us shot the ball a lot, even though we averaged a lot of, you know, probably shot 16 times a game. I did, you know, and uh, maybe 17 or so, but we spread the ball around, but he was a guy that was always, man, he could shoot, he could do so many things, but, you know, you had Tom Newrig was also all conference. Uh, we had Matt Ernst, who was, you know, all sport, everything. Um, we just, we had a great group of guys, even, you know, guys like Jimmy Hardesty guys, you may not know that, that we come off the bench and, and different guys that played. And, you know, I, I just, I think for me, I always mentioned Derek, cause I think he was again, one of the most underrated, very competitive, you know, that guy can go back and tell me what happened in, in games, uh, you know, back when we played that I'm just amazed by, but he's a student of the game and, and again, I, I always want to give him a shout out because it's just incredible. And when you, and Doug knows this very, very well, I played point guard Texas A&M even start against uh, a couple games, which is kind of crazy, but, but uh, you know, being a point guard's a, one of the toughest jobs on the floor. You got to keep everybody happy. So, you know, but I, again, I, I think uh, not the effort to leave anybody out. I am getting old, you know, but um, I just felt like we had a balanced team. We had a lot of players, you know, and I think we could have, I always felt we could have, we had a guy by the name of Chris Herman that played at ICC and then went on coach and, you know, Chris is still in the area. Uh, I love Chris. I think, you know, Chris, there was just some situations where he didn't end up playing for us his senior year. I always felt like if that guy played for us, and I say this, you know, knowing how good everybody was, I really felt like we would have won state pretty handily because we missed that big guy on the inside. And he was, you know, turned out to be a, a great player and a good college player as well at the level he played at. Chris, good man, good man. Um, well, well, for me, I mean, I first of all, um, you know, Rich Woods. I was sort of fortunate because before I got there, uh, you had Derek Holcomb and Chris Smith and Mark uh, Smith, and uh, you had all. I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, the, the the talent level was was <laughs> the bar was pretty high when I got there. Now, when uh, when I and then. The, as I mentioned earlier, the guys that I knew at Keller, a bunch of those guys like Terry Cole and Michael Bryan, um, were two, two, who to this day are, are, are my dear friends. Uh, but we had Vince Simpson, uh, uh, who, who played on that team. Um, and then, you know, we had uh, Otis Westerfield and Jeff Hare, and, and he went on to play. I mean, there were, we had, uh, I, I mean, just a number of guys that were just – you know, uh, great players. So, I mean, it was, I mean, you had to, 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 to play at Richwoods. I mean, you had to be, uh, uh, I mean, it was tough. So I was always sort of shocked that I had the opportunity to play as a sophomore with those guys and with, uh, that whole senior class. And I, I mean, all of those guys, uh, I think, I think 
I think three or four of us were all conference and, and Michael Bryan should have been all conference for, for some strange reason he wasn't. Um, and, um, you know, I, and then the next year we, you know, we, we had a whole new team and that, that team was very talented. We got upset in the Woodruff. Um, I think it was the regional or whatever. We had gotten foul trouble and we had the game sort of won. And then we, we just, we lost it at the end, which was disappointing, but that team, was very, very talented. We were all 6'4", and we ran the floor. Um, we had Cookie Monster, and I'm trying to think all the other orders, myself, Jeff Hare, we, had a, we were loaded then as well. Um, my senior year was probably the weakest team that we had when I was there, um, and um, they were younger, so it was sort of, a, it was a little bit of a challenge that whole year, and to be honest with you, I was surprised we even did as well as we did in the conference. But um, yeah, I mean, Rich Woods, the bar was set high there. Wayne Hammerton um, was, had it going and he had it going before we got there with Holcomb and that whole team. And they, they were ranked number one in the country at the time. And they lost, went to Galesburg and lost that game. So we ended up playing Galesburg my sophomore year in the uh, regional and uh, against a very talented Galesburg team. And we, we won that. Um, but that was sort of a, a big payback. Everybody was into that game. The place was packed. It was like Doug said, you had to get there hours and hours before the game. I mean, it was, uh, I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. And it was pretty intense. So, um, you know, like I said, it was, uh, Rich Woods was at the time was really, um, the, the, we've had, we had a lot of success, um, you know, when I when, before I got there and, and during my time. Doug, Doug made a point there, Boo, I think, too, it's also important is that during those days, you did just go in as a freshman and, and, and dominate, you know, because you had, you know, I remember. Uh, the wait your turn. Yeah, you had Dan Witzig, uh, Wes Blumenshine, maybe some names that guys haven't heard of, but, you know, great, solid players that were really good. And, you know, I mentioned Randy Holzhauer earlier, who I looked up to, you know, as I got closer to high school, great players. I mean, just. So you weren't walking in during those days like today. I go back and watch games, and I, I love my high school and go back and see it, but I see guys playing at a younger age. Some of these guys, I'm like, man, they wouldn't even see the light of day during those days because the talent was so – there was so much talent, you know. But, and I think, uh, I think, too, Doug, the, the, the coaches, like you said, the quality of coaches, so they, they, they developed uh, talent. They, they worked – they – um, you know, they would work on the fundamentals with you. And so, you know, as, uh, as you got to be a junior and senior, that was your turn and uh, to step up and play well. So, you, and, and as Boo said, you had to wait your turn. But during when you're waiting that term, I mean, they were drilling you for, you know, uh, making the correct pass, you know, it's good defense. You had to be a complete player. They were teaching you all, at, all facets of the game. So when it was your turn, you know, uh, you know, you were ready. So I, that's, that's the one thing I, I see, uh, I don't see up here in Chicago. I mean, it's just, they throw the ball out half the time and, and guys are clueless. So uh, whereas down there it was much different. Well, okay, uh, Lee and Augie, uh, I'm gonna move into uh, our senior year <laughs> in which, uh, both you guys, Rich Woods and Washington, were leading the conference, same record, but on the get down to the last game of the season, Doug Lee is ahead by 53 points for his season is complete. And Altenberger needs 54 points I believe, to become the conference scoring champion. And I'll let you guys uh, <laughs> talk about this uh -oh. because, um, you know, uh, I was playing for Central at the time and we played that night. And it wasn't like now in which you could uh, get on Twitter and find out what happened instantly. You, uh, you had to wait until the news came on at 1030, well, actually about 1018, it's when the sports came on and I got home that night and I was like, oh my goodness, he dropped 55 on Pekin. What the hell happened? <laughs> so with that being said, um, hang on. I was, uh, I ended up reading the Journal Star article 
I think it was 54 and 55, but I'm not sure. I think. Uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure, Doug. Was it? Because didn't you have 55? Yeah, it was it, it was 55. And the only reason I, I, I'll tell you a funny story here. after you I was there. Up. <laughs> yes, you, you, you were there. And um, so I'm going I'm to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit why. Um, so when I, I played against Doug, the first game that we played, and you might correct me, Doug, if I'm wrong, is I think we played you at Washington. Is that correct? It was, yeah. And uh, it, 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 it didn't go well for, for <laughs> me, and we lost. And uh, I was upset. And, uh, you know, Doug had a really good team. And uh, so when he came back to Peoria to play, you know, I was a little fired up because um, people were saying, you know, I'm just saying it the way it is, you know, that he was better than me. And, you know, I was like, OK, um, so I'm going to show him. And I, I played the worst game of my career was uh, against Doug. And I think I uh, um, just, you know, I was just wanted to beat him so bad. And uh, I'm just being honest here. So we were, what happened was um, we get to, uh, they said, well, Doug won the scoring championship. You know, the journal star Bob Levitt uh, said, said something. And I'm like, well, there's one more game left. I, I don't know how many points I got to score, but I, you know, I, I've got one game left. So we were in math class. And uh, the guys, you know, of course, we weren't that smart. We all figured it was 53 points. So the game starts off and uh, I just was like, okay, you know, uh, I'm a, I wanted to beat my dad's, be honest with you, my record, I wanted to beat my dad's record, which he had scored 44 points in the game. So it was my last game, it was my senior, you know, and I, all of a sudden I look over and there's Doug in the stands. I thought, oh, this is interesting. So it was, but it was a perfect night for me. I barely missed any shots. Um, Pekin was right there. So we needed every point that we needed. And um, so I, at the end, uh, my friends were counting the points, not that I was counting them, <laughs> but I thought I had won the scoring championship with about 10 seconds to go because I'd scored 53. And uh, they're like, no, you need to score one more basket. So uh, obviously I uh, Pekin scored and then I ran down and scored 55 points and uh, but it was a perfect night and uh, I just felt like you know I needed I wanted I wanted to win that scoring title but I'd never you know really gone that crazy in a game before in my life and it just was the perfect night and my friends were all there and we were all laughing and we talked about it earlier in the in the day you know maybe I could win the scoring championship um, but you know like I said you know Doug was um was uh, was a great rival and I always wanted you know and I felt like um, you know that was my one opportunity because he'd already beaten me twice so I felt like you know maybe I'm gonna try to do something special and then I saw him in the stands and I thought well this is a this is an interesting the funny part of this story is the tap horn I forget which which kid um, the dad you know his his one of the, the kids that uh, uh, played at Sons played at Northwestern. So you would appreciate this. So I went up to him and, and congratulated one of the, 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 the kid who played at Northwestern. His dad goes up and he says to him, he said, yeah, this is the guy that, that scored 55 against your, your, your uncle. And I, I laughed, I looked down, I go, no, uh, don't let him fool you. I scored 25 against him. I scored 30 against your uncle in the same game. <laughs> 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 he laughed the kid and his son they got a big kick out of it so um but yeah no it was uh, uh i mean just a, it was a long story but you know i just wanted to doug to know that I, that was one thing that i was like okay i'm gonna try to win it and uh i was lucky that you know that night everything worked out perfect and i always played well against pekin for some reason i don't i, I don't know why but whenever i played pekin it always seemed to come a little easier for me well uh tap horn is on the call now <laughs> yeah i'm on i'm not on video though because i've actually got my three grandsons over here right now so <laughs> oh let's see them let's see them man come on <laughs> well no nah, i won't show you to them right now but uh oh yeah. uh, like michael jackson you want to hide your kids from everybody <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, 
They're okay. not always the best behaved, but they're doing okay right now. Okay. Well, I think you heard what Augie had to say. So um, I did. That was a great story. I uh, I didn't realize he did that. So um, yeah. yeah. So that was my nephew. Oh, there Nathan he is. Hey, yeah, Hi guys. Yeah, that was my nephew Nathan was playing at Northwestern at the time. What's funny though is you know Stephen Bardo was always doing the Big Ten games, and he always referred to him as my son. My brother always. <laughs> Always got a kick out of that, yeah. <laughs> well, well, and the cool part is, you know, uh, the the and the Pekin Pekin uh, team was always a good team. We always had a great rival, Rich was, and it was like uh, whenever we played you guys, and then we play, you know, it would be like Washington with Doug Lee, or it was uh, then we would play. I mean, Central. It was all the games were like wars. I just right. remember Pekin the. Uh, we always were, were resentful for Pekin because when we got in the Pekin holiday tournament, we always felt like we got the, we got the, you know, the bad seed. So yeah. uh, we, there was always, uh, and then the, the seat, the guys that were a couple of years older than me, um, they had, they were had a great rivalry with Pekin. So with, uh, I'm thinking Brian Banassi and all these guys, I'm trying to remember all the guys on that team that were a little bit, a little bit before, before your time. No, um, Brian he, was a senior. He was your age, and so I was yeah. a sophomore. Yeah, he got he got yeah. hurt, didn't he, during that game? Uh, no, he I did. don't think so. He, he, he got hurt. Okay. He got he hurt did. because I was over there going hurt his ankle. Because we uh, that must, that kind must of have a been joke. Zercher played so much. Kind of a joke, but Coach Coach <laughs> Doty, I love him, but he uh, had so many games. I remember coming out of the game and forty points, starting fourth quarter, <laughs> and, he, and he said, right. to me, "No, no, you got to go over and sit down." And I was <laughs> I was sitting there going, "Why are they not taking Doug out?" They literally are not going to let him do it. So they, and I mean, it was, a, it was a close game, though. It was close, but the last minutes weren't. You know, they they well, yeah. had opened it up. But but the thing was, yeah. it's kind of funny because I'm sitting there going, "Hey, wait a minute!" You know, usually you know you get taken out of the game about this time, and and it was, uh, but it was fun. I mean, it was. Uh, now it's kind of funny how God works because Doug and I, as I think Doug would attest to, we have a really close relationship. Uh, you know, we rivaled through high school and got to know each other even better in the uh, Big Ten All-Star Games after our senior years. And, and uh, you know, I, I call him a true friend today. We just uh, yeah. you know, we talk a lot and so forth. But, you know, when you look back and it was that competitiveness. So literally, I'm sitting there going, like, take this guy out. You know, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and I remember somebody getting hurt. I think it was Benassi got hurt because when he got it, hurt, it was yeah. it was Benassi. Yeah. Uh, Benassi is one of my closest friends. Yeah, because he was guarding day. Doug, and I'm like, he came out and he got hurt, and I'm like, what in the heck? I mean, I'm I'm ready to go tape up your ankle or whatever. <laughs> back out there, fellas. This but, is what Brian yeah. Benassi told me. What he wanted me to tell Doug, he said he wouldn't have gotten if he wouldn't have gotten hurt. There's no way in the world he would have got that 55 points. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he was, you know, just being being Brian. But, I think he's uh, right, though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just and, remember. And Pat Pollard wanted me to tell both of you. Oh guys, yes, yes. Hello, well, Matt, Matt. Matt was younger too, so if Matt was older, it might have been for all of us a little tougher yeah. thing. Matt, was, Matt, I think was. You guys younger right? you guys paved the way right exactly yeah <laughs> pat said that uh pat pollard bob oh, levitt yeah. was coming down and yep. telling the assistant coach of richwoods how many more points doug <laughs> needed to surpass doug lee and then i pat wanted watching. me to ask you doug <laughs> he said you know i've you know I've, I've gone to a couple of richwoods games over the past several years and i noticed that that big thing on the wall that would have all the records of uh, past. I mean, every time I walk past, I would see Mark Smith, 49 points, Mark Smith, 49 points, all time leading scorer, Shug, Shug Williams, all time leading rebounder, Derek Holcomb. That thing was big on the wall. It's not there anymore, but it was there in 82. So Doug, you knew what the record was. We all, it was 49 by Mark yeah, Smith, Mark, yeah, right? Mark and that's true. You're right. That's a good point. I, I, Mark had, when I, when I got to 40, you know, high forties, I'm like, okay, now I can meet, uh, Smitty. So I was like, I want to meet Mark and, uh, you know, it's sort of fed on each other. And, uh, you know, I, I actually, I'd forgotten that, that, uh, Brian had gotten hurt. Um, and he, he was, uh, he was a good defender and I, I forgot, I totally forgot about that, but, uh, um, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, it was a fun night and, uh, it was, uh, it was sort of crazy. Um, I, I used to, 
And then I'd play against Matt in the, uh, the Gus Mackers. We played in that at a few times. Yeah. Uh, and we, and those, those were the think about the Gus Macker tournaments we had in Peoria. Those things were amazing. Oh, yeah. All the guys that the talent was incredible. Talent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was nuts. Um, you know, with David Booth and all these guys coming back playing and early uh, boo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, my, my kids, we, we would go to the uh, Globetrotters and I'd say, see, I know that guy over there. And they're like, Dad, you don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you need to show them the picture of you I, and I, I when I had the Afro you know, from 74. That's back yeah. in style. Back then, so. <laughs> well, it, it was, uh, I tell you, though, again, guys, it was it was a special, special time, I think, for Illinois basketball and you know, I, uh, it's, you know, when, when Doug says that about going out, see, that's to me, I love that. Right. Cause you never want to play, you know, and, and I do. And Doug said that second game, I'll never forget his, uh, when we played, you know, at Richwoods that second game, because I'm like, you know, the first game I'd had a really good game and I'm like, Oh my gosh, he's going to come out just, you know, fired up. Right. And it's like, we got to go. And he just had one of those nights you know, and it was like, I literally remember this and this is going to sound crazy. You guys won't believe this, but you, when you see another athlete not playing at the top of their game, I was really disappointed to be candid because, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. You know, people think, well, yeah, you did it. No, it's like, you want to play people when they're at their best. And, you know, I remember the reason I went over that game was to go over. I was, you know, not even thinking I was more just kind of supporting our, our season was done uh, kind of go over and, and, and basically, you know, see what happens with the conference championship. And, you know, I had, I didn't even know to went over, you know, coach was like, Hey, you got their Derek, probably Derek, you know, cause Derek always kept track of that. You got the rebounding title, you got the free throw percentage, you got the field goal percentage, you got the scoring. And when I went over and I'm like, you know, I got to watch and Doug play and we played so similar in a lot of ways, you know, I really was, and I can say this from my heart when he got it, I was like, yeah, Levitt running down the bench. Wasn't really a, a fun thing to see, but at the end of the day, you know, I I'm just tickled because for me, uh, our relationship that's gone on now for 30 plus years has just, has been incredible. So, uh, you know, and, and Matt, I think one of the things Matt being a couple of years behind us and, and picking up, it's like, you know, you just follow guys career. I mean, boo, when I watch, it's like, it is something to say like, Hey, I, I, I played against that guy. I know that guy he's out there creating a legacy with all these kids and stuff that you're doing with the globe trotters and, you know, congratulations on that because the, Thank you. I would say if any of us here on the phone, the impact, matter of fact, uh, go through all the players out of Peoria. And I, I, I say this, you know, I can't imagine a guy who's had more positive impact on young kids than you. So, I mean, I salute you wow. for that. Thank you. Thank you, Agreed. Doug Lee. Thank you. Thanks. For yeah. I mean, I, I have, I've had friends who, uh, who have gone up to you that grew up in Peoria that you, know, you didn't know and who knew me and said, you know, I went up to, to, to boo, um, you know, in Chicago and, you know, he's, you know, you didn't know him, but you say you're from Peoria and, and you made them feel like, you know, really special with their kids there. And I can just tell you, guys, I'd run into them later and they'd say, hey, listen, you know, he's just a terrific guy. I go, of course he is. He's from, from Peoria, you know, we're all good guys. <laughs> and then watching Matt play at, at ISU, you know, I was always rooting for him and, uh, you know, like, hey, he's a Peoria guy, you know, he's from Pekin and whatever. And I'm like, hey, this is awesome. And so you just, you, you, you know, you wanted to beat everybody, but uh, you wanted them to, to, to do well as, and, and you had great pride when you came from Peoria, especially watching all these guys play hoops, uh, whether it's Booth up at, you know, DePaul, you know, you're rooting for him. I mean, I go on and on and on. I mean, right. watching all these guys play, I mean, there were, there's a great camaraderie and I just, you know, um, you know, Matt, we were talking about this earlier, you might not have heard, but you know, in the summer we'd all play against each other. We, you know, go over to different gyms and different oh, yeah. things. I mean, it was, it was just insane, as I said earlier, on how good, uh, you know, the basketball sometimes, to be honest with you, in the summer league with nobody there was like, we had Derek Holcomb and Mark Smith and uh, Chris Williams, all these guys coming over. It was, uh, it was really, a, I mean, the summer league was, was uh, amazing. Uh, and Mark Smith taught me something in the Big Ten, how to be a better defensive player. He said, no, when you go to the Big Ten, you got to do this, you got to do that. I mean, he was telling me some tips. 
you know, back then when I was a, a, a senior. Well, okay, that's a, a great segue into uh, you guys' path to Texas A&M and for you, Doug, to go to Illinois. So I do remember- hey, Cur Curly Boo, before me, you yeah. move on to that. I'm, I'm gonna drop off. I got uh, some uh, grandkid duties to do, but I do appreciate you getting get me on with these guys. They paved the way for, for me and others behind me. Um, and I really appreciate that. And this is a great thing you're doing for you reviving the history of Peoria area basketball. So thanks for all that. And you guys have a great night. Thanks, Matt. Good to hey, see you. Good to see you, Matt. Good, good to see you. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, I remember my senior year, our senior year, playing against uh, you guys in the regional. And I looked over at you. I was trying not to look at you guys. I knew all of you because I played at Richards my freshman, sophomore year. And I remember just looking over at you and I saw like what kind of shoes he got on. Oh man, he, <laughs> he got them new Converse that nobody could get in Peoria. And they were white and navy blue. And then all of a sudden I look over, I see Lou Henson over there sitting, you know, and everybody's shaking his hand, paying attention to him. I said, man, he's going to Illinois just because of them damn shoes you had on that day. <laughs> hey, shoes were a big deal back then, you know? Yes. They that came with the car, car, I think. Yeah, they didn't well, match they didn't anything. <laughs> didn't match Richwood's colors. Green and gold does not match maroon and white. <laughs> no, no. Well, for me, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll uh, start out. Um, I I I uh, looked at Purdue and I looked at Indiana and Illinois and actually and uh, and a couple other schools, Big Ten schools. So I wanted to play in the Big Ten, and you know my dad having played at Illinois, um, you know was. Um, but I, I liked, you know, I loved Indiana. I liked Coach Knight at the time. And I loved Gene Cady. I thought Gene was my type of guy. Um, and he was a tough guy. So um, those, those schools, I, I, but in the end, um, when Bruce Douglas decided to come to, to Illinois, I thought, you know, he was the guy in Illinois, Mr. Basketball. Mm -hmm. Parade All-American. And then Ephraim Winters was going, I'm like, hey, I want to I wanna get in with these guys because something special is going to happen with them. And so uh, having my dad play at Illinois and then coming in with such a great recruiting class with Bruce and Ephraim, it was just sealed the deal for me. And that's, that's how I, you know, I ended up getting going to Illinois. Plus, you know, it's, it's such a short distance. So, you know, I had to call Gene Cady and uh, Bobby Knight up and tell them I'm not going. And, uh, and I, but I, to this day, I mean, uh, uh, you know, Katie was as, I, I love Gene Katie and, and Doug will talk more about him and, and I got to know him even better when I started doing announcing and coach Knight is coach Knight. I mean, he's, uh, you know, uh, they don't make him like that anymore. So, you know, um, and that's how come back to the, how the big 10, it was just a crazy league back then, but Illinois was, uh, I'm glad I went there and it, you know, it changed my life. I met my wife there and to this day, you know, um, you know, it's a big part of me and a part of my life. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I mean, my journey was a little different. I mean, the thing was, is that once Doug, you know, I kind of got contacted by those, by those schools, even Indiana, uh, you know, but they were kind of, I know Illinois was waiting on Doug to kind of, you know, commit. Um, and what had happened was my sophomore year, which back in those days, now they recruit kids, what, when they're five? But, but the, reality, <laughs> the, the reality is back in those days, after my sophomore year, there was a guy in our town that was familiar with Texas A&M and Texas A&M started showing interest and then strongly my junior year and then, you know, my senior year. And I was really, it was kind of one of those things. I remember going visiting Bradley, uh, uh, Nick Van Sy I mean, uh, uh, the head coach then at Bradley. But Versace. 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 Yeah, Versace. Versace. Yeah, and then we had, uh, you know, Mitchell J.J. Anderson and, you know, Willie Scott, David Thirdkill, you know, incredible players. And I remember going to the locker room and stuff, and I'm like, uh, you know, looking around. And one of the guys mentioned to me, one assistant coach, I think it was Baroni or somebody had mentioned to me, like, you know, imagine if we got Doug Altenberger and you together, you know, and that was like the first time, I, you know, I I'd kind of thought it before because everybody was like, hey, if you're recruiting Doug Altenberger, you're not recruiting Doug Lee. And, wow. you know, because we were so that similar. And I think that that really motivated me. It, it motivated me to kind of go like, hey, wait a minute here, you know, um, 
you know, what, what's it going to take to, I kind of, I kind of went and I love Texas A&M when I say this, but I kind of went there for all the wrong reasons because they were really showering me with a lot of attention. I uh, won't get into more of it, but it was a, it was a situation where a beautiful school got there uh, was probably a life I didn't need to go into from the standpoint of hanging out and doing some of the wrong things in life that you learn and partying and different stuff. And, you know, I really realized there when I got hurt my sophomore year, because supposed to be one of the top sophomores in the country in the Southwest Conference and, and so forth. And, you know, when I got hurt, um, I really wanted to redshirt and they didn't want to redshirt me. They wanted me to come back for the conference tournament and so forth. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm kind of a number here now, you know, um, and the coaches were like, you know, you're going to stay here. Uh, you know, it was incredible. Next to Kentucky, we had the nicest sports dorm in the country. Uh, it was, it was just incredible. An apartment and a sports dorm, you know, again, don't go into much of that, but uh, you know, things that, that you, you go through. And I just realized like, wait a minute, you know, I'm watching Doug, you know, uh, play and so forth. And I'm going, man, that's the type of basketball that I want to be a part of. That's what I really signed up for. I remember, when I got MVP in the Illinois All-Star game and then everybody coming, Marquette and everybody going, you know, don't go to AM. And I'd already committed. And during those days, you could lose, I think you'd lose a year eligibility or whatever if you signed and then, you know, unsigned or whatever, how that went then. And so, um, you know, I, I went down there and, and to this day, I, I have many dear friends at Texas A&M. So I, I love the school, but it was a great experience coming back and sitting out under Coach Katie because I got to watch. It was the weirdest thing, like, I'm sitting out and I'm watching Doug play, right? You know, like I'm, I'm watching him play and it's like, man, I just, it was, I, I wanted to play, but every time Illinois play, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get out there, you know, and, and just had to wait for my time and uh, that sit out year and was fortunate to, as Doug said, learn an overall game. I was a scorer, you know, I was a scorer uh, before Purdue and I was a scorer after that, you know, more overseas and everything. And so to learn the defensive game in the Big Ten, I loved it. I mean, you literally, as Doug knows this, you literally could almost be in a fist fight before a foul would be called. Hmm. And I love that type of basketball. And I know he did as well, where you could just go at it. But um, it was special. So, I mean, I always do think about it. I don't know, Doug, you ever thought about people that mentioned it, man. If we ever played on the same team together, it would have been. Oh, oh I, I think, I think. I, I think we would have been fine because I, you know, you could, uh, Doug was big enough and strong enough to play uh, the two or three and, and he could also play one. I, I, I could play the two or three. I, I didn't feel comfortable playing, you know, I, the point as much. So well, I did a lot of backing up. Yeah. <laughs> a <little> backing up. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we needed. Boo. We get into, yeah, you know, right. point no, guard I was not in the category of boo as a point guard. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I, um, I mean, by, like my, at Illinois, my sophomore year, we had such great success. And then we thought my junior year, everybody coming back, we were ranked number two in the country. So we thought we were going to really be able to have a great year. And then we had injuries and we had a, a few things that were going on that didn't fit well um, chemistry wise. And so we, we struggled a little bit, but we got it going back again at the end of the year. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, um, I, I look back and I thought, man, that would be really cool if, if uh, Doug would have played at Illinois, um, you know, that would have been pretty, pretty cool stuff. Cause I know uh, Lou Henson would have had us bowl out there at the same time. He would have figured out how to get us out there. Well, it's only fitting. If you Google one, you see the other's picture somewhere, <laughs> like, somewhere down the line, but, but you got to play with a, a homeboy and Tony Weisinger. So yeah. I know that had to have been special to have another Peoria boy on the team. And this year, I, I know that you're, you're back to doing broadcasting with Illinois and there's, uh, you know, two Peoria boys on the team and DeMonte Williams and, and Adam Miller. So how was it uh, playing with uh, Weisinger who was, you know, played with me at Central and um, was a rival and now you guys are teammates? Well, and, and Tony was, was, was a great teammate. I, I, I can't, um, his senior year, um, he was a, uh, a year younger than uh, Doug and I. Um, and he, he came, uh, his uh, senior year, he, he just had a phenomenal year. He was our, was our point guard. And he was a guy, again, who, who waited his turn um, and came in off the bench and played some valuable minutes uh, early in his career. Uh, he, again, fundamentally, he was solid. 
um, and he um, uh, didn't try to do too much out there. Uh, and in his senior year, he just had, it was, he was, uh, he, he really came into his own. And, and Tony was just a great uh, teammate and, and a great person to this day. Um, you know, I text him, I make sure, check in with him and make sure how he's doing. And, uh, you know, he's another guy that just, uh, you know, just, you know, just a great human being. You know, he's been coaching at ICC all these years and just really impacting uh, young men. So I, I'm just, I just think the world of Tony and as a teammate, um, you know, he's, uh, he's one of my favorites. Great. And I feel uh, that. Tony is incredible. I mean, he is uh, just briefly, he is a excellent human being, just like, like Doug said. And, you know, it's just always been a great representative of Peoria basketball as well, like yourself, Boo, and, you know, so many guys to come, but always respect him. That, that, that guy played hard, man. He played hard. That's one thing I think about Tony, people talk about his athletic ability and he had it for sure, but he worked hard. Tony worked hard. He could, he could on a fast Relentless. break, he could pull up uh, on a dime, stop full, uh, and, and pull up right at that free throw line. That's what incredible body about. control. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he just pull up and, and he, and hit that floater, uh, uh, you know, and it was, it was something beauty and he, nothing but nothing but that too. I mean, it was something he, uh, that was one of his go-to shots on a fast break. Now he didn't always pass it to the guy on the wing on that fast break, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's watching right now, but I, I have a couple of messages here from, from people that admire you and people that you played against. And one of them is actually kind of funny. It's from Ivan Stone. Ivan, I did. Okay. Ivan told me to tell uh, Doug Lee, hello, it was great to battle you. But he also said to Doug Alberg, he would like to apologize for stepping on your head and, and bloody in your face in a game. <laughs> I don't remember that happened. I was, of course, there, but um, he said he's sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I put this way: I, I don't remember uh, it, but I, I did have, I did, uh, I did get a couple bloody noses in my career, and in. Uh, about four or five years ago, I played in a pickup basketball game in Mexico, of all places, Cabo San Lucas, and I broke my nose down there. And the doctor came in and said, man, your nose is broken in four places. I said, well, take care of it now, doc. You get... So I got a nose job down in Mexico. And uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I can tell you, I, I, uh, I, had a, I had a few deviated septums in that nose. So, but I'm, okay. I'm back at 100% mm -hmm. now. Okay, so I was just at the ear, nose, and throat specialist having it for another surgery. So I've had, I think, Doug, I, it's going to be close, but I've, I've had uh, five nose surgeries. Really? Yep, and it still can't. I got a deviated septum so bad they can't fix. So uh, oh, okay. it's, uh, but well, it's go, go to Cabo San Lucas. It's a great Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? He'll take care of you. <laughs> If I, if I didn't have insurance, I probably would. <laughs> well, um, Doug Lee, I have a message from Washington's mayor, Mary Gary Manair. And he says, I played for the Panthers with Doug's older brother. And little Doug was our bat boy when we played softball. Doug was my first speaker at my mayor's prayers breakfast in 2001. And we sold out for the event. He's Washington's favorite son. Mm. So that's from the mayor of Washington, man. Oh, I appreciate it. I mean, you know, a lot of times positions, I always give the glory to God. It's a part where I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ when I went through sports. And I think when, uh, until I got in professional sports, my first year, George Carl was a coach in the minor leagues. And, you know, you, you really once uh, came to the Lord's and, and Doug knows this as well. He's come to the Lord as well. And it's a part that, you know, uh, I won't, I won't take this time to preach to anybody, but I can tell you my life was drastically changed and, and, uh, you know, I'm always a work in progress, but, you know, the city of Washington has been incredible to me. Uh, we've had Alex Peters, different players have come up, great players, you know, guys, I can mention so many guys, uh, my brother-in-law, Todd Foster, you know, that kid used to bug me and, you know, try to always want to go play ball with me when I was younger and ends up, you know, getting three big 10 championship rings, uh, being a captain on the big 10 championship team. So, you know, just the memories of people there. But uh, to the mayor, I think, you know, again, coming out of a big family, I mean, Gary, I used to watch him play ball and baseball, and that's how I got my love for baseball. And everybody always said you could be a, a lot better baseball player than basketball if you focused on it. And 
I don't know. I just love that round ball and that, you know, big round ball to play. And, but it's an honor. It's an honor. I know a lot of places I went and represented. I know during the tornado, I was asked to come back and when that happened and everything there. And, you know, I never, I never forget where I came from. And it's always nice to be proud of where you came from, you know, and, and so that's, uh, I appreciate that, Gary, and the whole town of Washington. I, I hope I represented well, but you know, it's, it's always fun to pass the torch on and see these younger guys, you know, do it. I cheer them on. I tried to go back to games many, many years just to go back to high school games and see, and I still want to make a point to try to do that, but you know, Great tradition. So I appreciate that, Boo. I appreciate you saying that. I also want to say about Ivan, I had Ivan written down and Mark to talk about. So he, he says that Ivan Stone was, was man, he was a heck of a player, you know, and, and just tough, tough, tough. And I knew going up against him, I was always, and I never did. It was one, I always wanted to, this is kind of weird. Like you think back and I think pop in my head, right? I always wanted to dunk on Ivan. And I never did, <laughs> but you know, that goes back to, it kind of brought that out. Right. I'm not even <laughs> thinking that, but I remember like this guy's talking, I always wanted to, and I, I don't, I'm sure I never did. Uh, but you know, that's kind of what you thought about during those days. It's like, I'm going to go out and get a dunk on these guys, you know? And I think that, uh, you know, the whole Washington thing, we started off the mayor thing. I appreciate it, but I did not want to not mention Ivan because you know, all those guys, and I know Tony Goley and the things, and a lot of people talk about the history of Tony, but I just want to acknowledge like Tony was an incredible basketball player, you know, and uh, played a lot of pickup games with him and, and guys. And, and I'm just, glad that you mentioned Tony Goley because Al Alexander, I'm pretty sure you remember the speedster from Manuel, Al yeah. Alexander. He was asking if you guys remember Tony Goley. Oh, yeah. Who passed away a couple years ago. And Doug, you and I in the past have talked about Gully, and I remember oh my gosh. you always saying that he had to uh, could turn a pass into a jump shot so quick. And uh, rest in peace to Tony Gully. Uh, Malcolm McGee called him Mike oh. back in the day. Yep. Yep. Malcolm Mike uh, McGee says, "Hey, Doug, it's great to see you guys." You yeah, know, no, so uh, and, and, Tony uh, Weisinger is watching. Yep. yep. Derek remember, Funk uh, is watching. Yep. There you go. Uh, Susie Stout Sorensen now says hello, Doug. Sure. Right. Yep. yep. Oh, my, my dad and, and uh, her, her dad. Was Iles. Best friend. That's right. Iles Stout. Iles Stout. Yeah, the, the legend. He, uh, awesome. Central uh, legend. I tried to tell my camera. I introduced him. He came by my basketball camp because his grandson was working my camp. And he walked in and I was like, oh, Iles Stout, how you doing? And I introduced him to the Central players. I said, man, you have no idea how good this dude was. Yeah. This is one of the, the greatest players to play at Central House Stout. So, yeah, and then his daughter, uh, I believe, won state championship, played the state title game a couple of times. Uh, a couple of years before us, I think, Doug. Yeah, Rick, George Rich Montgomery, was, George the, the, the Montgomery was, calls you Steve Kerr before Steve yeah. Kerr, Augie. <laughs> yeah, there, he, was, uh, he, was, he was our catcher in baseball. Yes, Steve Kerr, good dude, good dude. I was actually on the baseball team with you, Doug. I didn't get at Rick Snar wouldn't let me off the bench ever. <laughs> Back, ever, you know. Let me be quiet. Um, well, let's see. There's just maybe one thing I wanted to talk about here before we wrap up. But um, first of all, Augie. Uh, you played your freshman year. You, you mentioned that you played with Bruce Douglas, who was the end all be all of our senior year, you know, uh, McDonald's uh, All American and Mr. Basketball. And they had that 50, 60 game winning streak until Mendel got them. But uh, you played with Derek Harper your freshman year. Mm, what, wow. what was that like playing with him that one year? And then he went on to the NBA, he went hardship. Well, he, uh, uh, as um, I could tell you, um, he, he would embarrass me in practice um, I, when I got there. And I thought I was a pretty decent basketball player. And uh, he, he made me, um, you know, he, he was just a, a, he was big, he was strong, he could run the floor, um, and he could do everything. You know, defensively, he was as good as anybody I've ever uh, on the ball defense. Derek was amazing. Um, and I just had to guard him every day in practice. It reminded me um, that I just had to get better or, you know, and I would work so hard just to try to stop him and defend him. So when I got, when he left, by the time he left, my, 
his uh, junior year, he, he, you know, uh, when hardship, he went to the NBA. I said, if I can guard that guy in practice, I can guard anybody in the country. And um, hmm. so wow. I, I went from being a lousy defender to, to being a good defender to the point where by the time I graduated, if Coach Henson wanted me to guard somebody, you know, he'd say, Doug, you got to shut that guy down. So I, um, he made me a better, he made me a, a defensive player, made me play with great pride. And, and Derek, um, is, uh, and, and I got to know Derek very, very well. And, uh, he, he was, uh, and he'd always push me and, uh, uh, he made me, uh, and I, I appreciate his, uh, and then he mentored me, uh, during that year as well. And he said, Augie, you're going to be a good player and just, you know, be patient, work on your game. And, you know, he said, you'll, you'll be there someday. So he, he, he gave me a big shot of confidence. That's cool. And Lee, I mean, your playing career, man, you uh, you played the CBA, WBL, uh, you played overseas and you and you played in the NBA. And I was looking at some of the, the players that you played with uh, alongside uh, Kenny Anderson, you know, kind of household basketball names, Mookie Blaylock, Sam Bowie, uh, Maurice Cheeks. Wow. I wish I would have had a chance to to play with the great Cheeks uh, from my dad's high school in Chicago. Bernard King. And Spud Webb, and one guy that I really admired, uh, the Croatian uh, Drazen Petrovic mm. that you played with. So what was that experience like, and what was your road? I know that you didn't initially go into the NBA right after uh, Purdue, that you, I think you played in the CBA and maybe someplace else, and then and then uh, latched on with uh, the Nets. Is that correct? Yeah, I was the first pick of the Rockets, 35th pick. But what had happened was they, the union had held all the rookies out of camp. There's actually still some pending things on that because that was the one year that rookies were down. You know, I was if I reported to camp, I could have a guaranteed contract and be with the Rockets or the Twin Towers or, you know, get fined 50 percent of your contract if you reported. So, you know, I was young, had a different agent at the time. Uh, ended up reporting and not till like uh, two preseason, three preseason games even left. And, you know, they paid me, a lot of people don't know that they paid me to stay there that whole year uh, with the Rockets, which I did that first year to, to be a part of the team the next year. And then coach Fitch gets fired. So, you know, um, I was actually uh, had the Detroit uh, Pistons actually called to pick me up when I was playing there and they made me a bunch of promises and you learn a lot about life. You learn a lot about business, you know, and you look back and said, you know, I could have gone to the Pistons at the time and uh, because they were going to pick me at the, uh, I think they had the third to last pick of the first round. And I was on the phone with, with them and, and thought I was going to go to the Pistons at the end of the first round. And, you know, then you go through that. And I really, I mean, I'll be candid. I'll be very transparent in a short time here. Uh, you know, having a wonderful, wonderful wife and so forth. Like I'm married in college, I just kind of fought a little bit of depression because it's a part where you go and you you work all your life to do something. And then you realize, you know, outside the top 50 players in the NBA who are better than anybody on the planet, you know, it's just being in the right place at the right time. I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, Doug Altenberger. I mean, the reality is I know this and I can say this with confidence, you know, Doug on the right team, the NBA, he could play a lot of years. And I think that when you learn that and you recognize arriving, you mentioned some teams, Bernard King, I remember in the summer league having, I mean, in a, a training camp against Bernard. Now his knee was hurt, granted, but I had 38 points against him and, you know, walk off the floor and I'm fighting to get a contract. And I got in early, Drazen Petrovic, uh, when I went overseas, I had uh, set some three point records there and set C, uh, three uh, point record in the CBA and, and basically carved my way overseas. And I just kept coming back to the NBA waiting for someone to get hurt, you know, and it happened that I, <laughs> it was crazy wow. because my, I had a great preseason wow. with New Jersey. I actually won uh, the scouts and stuff. The scouting crew came over and said, you probably had, you know, the first or second best six man of preseason in the whole NBA. And I thought, okay, here it goes. You know, my agent called me and said, you're probably gonna be signing for, you know, a million, million dollars soon, you know, after this year. And I sit 22 games waiting for Drazen to negotiate his contract. Hmm. And then Drazen and I became real close because we were lifting weights one day and he came in and said, you know, I got something to tell you. And he got all teary eyed and I'm like, what's going on? Drazen, he's like, um, you know, we talked to my agent and we said they couldn't play you anymore until I got my contract done. And, you know, people don't realize that that's the business of basketball. Now, not every team was that way, but 
you know, Mookie Blaylock and I are dear friends. Derek Coleman, I talk to every week. Derek, actually, I do business stuff with. And, you know, uh, even guys like Jerome Williams. I'm in, I'm in a company with Jerome. So all those guys, you know, I used to, uh, uh, you know, once you're in, I think the hard part for me is once you're in and you know you can play and, you know, I led the Bulls in scoring one summer league. And I say that not to boast in any way, but to tell you how fine that line is. Bill, you've been around professional. Doug, you've been around it, right, to go. You know, we went up to the Bulls. It's literally, you know, that. I remember Steve Curry. You mentioned, you know, there was Steve Curry. Steve Curry was telling me one time, uh, you know, they cut Judd Bushler from New Jersey to keep me. And Judd ends up going and getting picked up in Chicago. And I had the opportunity to sign with Chicago after the summer league for the same deal that New Jersey gave me. And everybody says, you're nuts. Well, you know, who wants to sit behind Michael Jordan? You're never going to play. <laughs> um, so, but at the end of the day, once you realize you can play at that level um, for me, I always say this, you know, I was a lot better than a lot of players that made millions, but I wasn't as good as some that never got the chance. And that's the reality, wow. you know, wow. it's, it's it, deep. It, it really, it really is the reality, you know, I, and once you know, you can play at that level. I remember, you know, the Bulls in the summer league and beat me and BJ Armstrong, Will Purdue and that summer team and, and scoring, you know, at 30 points, at, you know, in the LA summer league, which was like the thing back then and, you know, doing incredible and thinking, why in the heck am I not signing for all this money? And then they'd make me a minimum offer or 20,000 over a minimum offer because the salary cap was different. I, you know, I've heard recently now the NBA keeps so many players. There's players that won't even see the light of day that'll make more money in, you know, in their careers than I ever made. And probably, you know, probably two years they will, and they'll never see the light of day in the NBA. I'm not, let me tell you, I'm not at all down about that. I'm so thankful that there's so many opportunities for players to make money today. You know, uh, I do a lot of times think when people ask me about, well, you're better than Doug Altenberger. Um, they don't know basketball. The reality of it is, I think we're exactly the same. I just think the circumstances at times are a little different. You know, um, I always say I may have been at times a little more athletic, but he was a whole lot smarter, you know, and, and that's sort of a gun would, you know, and so, so boo, I, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be a part of this whole thing. I, I, I really appreciate you bringing in all of central Illinois. I know David Booth, a dear friend and, you know, the Peoria basketball talk that they had going, I thought it was great, but I thought, you know, there's a whole bigger story. And that's what you told me, boo, right. That goes on. And so yeah. I just always feel like it's a privilege to, you know, just be mentioned with people and, and, you know, but I do want a lot of, I have a lot of friends that over the years who said, Doug, if I could just have made it to the level that you made it to. And I, I get a chance to tell them about the Lord and I just get to say, Hey, you know, uh, you know, stand in front of 30,000 people shooting a free throw, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't even hold a speck of sand compared to relationship with Christ. So for me, it's, it's just something that, uh, I, you know, I feel bad sometimes because there's so many good players, you know, what if an Ivan Stone gets a different situation with a college team or something happens like that, you know, what if a Derek Funk goes and gets, you know, on a different, different team and allowed to do things. That's the thing I saw. I mean, you had to be good. You had to be really, really good to get to the next level. There's no doubt about it, but I always want those players to know, like, it's just, it's a fine line. And, you know, I got some breaks and didn't get some breaks. You know, I remember hurting my ankle so bad and never thought I'd play again when I was in the NBA and, you know, was, was fortunate to be able to play here and there until I was 35, but um, you know, it's just a privilege. So that's all I, you know, we're not short on words, right, Doug? No, no, no. <laughs> Boo, boo, thanks, thanks again for uh, connecting. D Doug and I have been close friends for for many, many years, and um, you know it was fun to relive, um, to, you know, the, the today the high school and and uh, also with college, and then you know for me and the pros, um, you know, to be honest with you, I I love the game, but. I had decided at a, at a certain age that I wanted to have a family and, uh, you know, I was, I got married and, you know, I just, I decided to go uh, another way. My wife always laughs because she says to me, I said, well, we could have gone to Europe and, uh, you know, made uh, some pretty good money and, and played a couple of times a week. She goes, no, you're lying. You didn't tell me that. And I go, no, it, it was the case. But, um, you know, I, I still, my folks still live in Peoria. I love Peoria. Uh, I go back there all the time. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, uh, I just, 
love that area. I just, uh, I love the, I love central Illinois and I'm so proud that I came from there. And, um, you know, I, to, to this day, some of my best friends, um, Terry Cole and Mike O'Brien, you know, are very close to me. And, and, uh, there's a guy watching today, Toby Block, who lives in Arizona, but I met him in kindergarten. So my, some of my best friends are from Peoria. And uh, you know, as Doug said, um, it was a great place to grow up and, uh, you know, is just really, really special. So I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm thankful. Um, you know, and I, I just um, I, today was a joy for me. And Boo, I've known you since fourth grade. Uh, and I'm very, again, proud of you and what you've done and what you made yourself as um, uh, with the Globetrotters, but also what you've done to all these young men. And I think it's just fantastic. And I, I just commend you on that. So I, I, I it you. was great. I had a, I had a ball tonight today. Uh, and, uh, and Doug Lee, I can sit here and tell you uh, he was one of my biggest rivals and uh i wanted to beat him as bad as anybody and um but today you know we're we're, we're dear and best friends and, and he's a guy i can pick up the phone and uh, i know he's got my back so you know that's the way i hope if someone's watching this that you know um you know uh is the cool part of 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 doug and, and doug you know and uh, we competed against against purdue and I guarded him and, uh, you know, Gene Katie is as crazy as anybody. And, uh, you know, those were great rivalries. Iowa, I remember going, you know, it was Purdue, uh, Iowa and Indiana. I mean, that whole, that was just, those, those were the schools that, you know, uh, were, were great in the big 10. And, and, and I was excited to see when Doug, when he went on and I was rooting for him in the NBA and Doug is right. You know, back then it was a much smaller, um, much smaller. There wasn't as many teams. There wasn't many players. So it was very tough to get in there. It was just a break. You needed a little luck. And uh, for some reason, you know, God had better, bigger, and better plans for Doug and I. And we didn't make it to the NBA, but we played a little bit. But we still have great experiences. And he had bigger, uh, as that's what I try to tell my kids, you know, God's got a plan for you. It's not always the plan that you want but he does have a plan for you. And, uh, you know, if you're faithful and you love him, he'll, uh, he'll, uh, he'll, uh, you'll be rewarded in, in ways you'll never know. So anyway, but Boo, thanks for having us on, man. You're I'm welcome, man. This, this has been awesome. And it's, it's a pleasure to see you guys. I grew up with you. And um, like I said, you guys are always connected. If you Google one, you'll see the picture of the other <laughs> somewhere down the line. Hey, it's good to see you brothers. And uh, okay. you are not forgotten. That's for sure. Okay. Well, thanks, Boo. Thanks, Take brother. Take care, God fellas. Bless you, Boo. Appreciate you. All right. God Thank bless you, you all. All right. All right. Yeah. Man, this was awesome. Yeah. This was absolutely awesome. And uh, uh, on Monday, we'll pick up again. And on Monday, we're going to have uh, Tony Gower, uh, Dwayne oh, sure. Banks, okay. and uh, Percy Neal from 1977. Peoria High State champions. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have some of the girls from the Morton Championship run of four, uh, four titles on Tuesday. So stay tuned. I wish you guys all the best. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. Respect each other and love each other. See you guys. All right, Augie. All right, Boo. Thanks, brother. All right, stay in touch. And Dougie, I'll be talking to you, man. For sure. Okay. All yes. right. All right.